It looks and sounds like it was only yesterday, but it is already five years since Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyokoa took the oath of office as governor of oil-rich Delta State. I want us to recall the days of campaign and I want you to sing with me. I'm standing up the road that rocks me, that rocks me, that rocks me. I'm standing on the road that rocks me. Interestingly, Okoa, just like many public office seekers and political actors globally, convinced Delta electorates that he is the best man suited to occupy the high-profile office as governor. He sold his programs during campaigns and rallies as he crisscrossed the 25 local government areas in Delta State. His vision of a new Delta where things would work was encapsulated in his policy document codenamed Smart Agenda with the rider Prosperity for All Deltans. An integral part of that message was his promise to do things differently. As a government, we have a clear vision of what we plan to do in the next four years. It is to enthrone a legacy of wealth and prosperity for all our people and communities. We are committed to the building and consolidation of a state in which there shall be more employment opportunities, a flourishing agriculture, effective health and educational systems, renewed urban infrastructure, and enhanced security and peace to bolster economic growth and development. That Senator Koa eventually won the gubernatorial election and got sworn in as governor of Delta State on May 29, 2015 is no longer news and the rest, as they say, is history. He set out to work to do things differently as he promised and five years down the line, his scorecard across several sectors has become a testimony to behold. Leadership is something you don't buy it. He prepared for this job. Is somebody that has passion to serve the state. That's why you can see that a lot of progress today. Was His Excellency prepared for this job? Very prepared. He had the basic training. He had executive experience from the grassroots to the state level and then went to the Senate, the national level. So he had legislative experience. He knows the issues of lawmaking already. He knows the issues of executive. For me, as governor, round peg in a round hole. One of the first tasks on his table was to tackle unemployment that loomed large like a hydra-headed monster. With a clear knowledge of teeming young vibrant population in the state, Governor Kawa saw the need to harness these idle energies and get them working. To achieve this, he created the Job and Wealth Creation Office through which thousands of youths were registered and trained under the Youth's Agriculture Entrepreneurship Program, YAGEP, and Skills Training Entrepreneurship Program, STEP. The most important problem of this country today is unemployment. And you can't solve unemployment anywhere in the world without supporting micro, small enterprises. So what the Governor Okowa is doing today is exemplary and should be emulated. He will have a job creation officer, which I don't think I've seen in any other state that is doing that, training people, giving them the funding to start their own business. The Yaga program was essentially agriculture-based. Thus, it took advantage of the abundant fertile arable land available. So many thousands have been trained and empowered in various fields of agriculture such as crop, vegetable, fishery, animal husbandry, roots, tuber, and many more. Yagep gave me the fish, the fingerless. Yagep gave me the feet. So what more can I ask for? This is what we call good governance. Go at the work. We are actually seeing it, and I'm a beneficiary. We didn't pay anything back. Everything was free of charge given to us by the governor. And uh, we trained the fish to table size successfully. We sold and uh, as of now I have about uh, almost 5,000 fishes. So that is like times two of what 
the governor empowered us with. So from that, you can tell it went really well. Just like in Yage, under the Skills Training Entrepreneurship Program step, many more thousands were also trained in numerous entrepreneurial enterprises. These ones also benefited seed money as well as starter packs to enable them start their businesses and lives as CEOs of their own businesses, job providers rather than job seekers. Some of the vocations include welding and fabrication, hairstylists, fashion and designs, carpentry, beads making and many more. Reducing poverty is a systematic approach. The enterprises we do are homegrown available businesses. In recognition of the many pitfalls associated with startups, Governor Fanyokoa followed up the young farmers and those trained in several other skills with refresher trainings, mentoring and monitoring, distribution of regular inputs as well as microcredit financing. We've been doing um, training on behalf of um, state government through job creation office. You see that um, in a very close time, the result of what the HE and the Job Creation Office, including the mentoring and the monitoring office, you will know that the skill we are about to unleash in Delta State, the potential is very huge. In the past five years, the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources has been working with sister agencies to boost food and livestock production in Delta State, providing assistance to farmers. This synergy with Yageb, Dada and many other farm holdings yielded results, especially in cassava cultivation. This no doubt encouraged the administration to initiate the policy that birthed the Delta State Foods Export Initiative to give potency to Delta Beyond Oil policy. Since then, Delta has been producing quality Gary with complete testing and packaging for exports. The export initiative, the first mandate is to see an increase and a better flow for non-oil export. And in the case of Delta, we're looking more at agricultural non-oil export. Our primary focus is on agriculture. A true leader goes into the trenches with his team, fighting with them for the same goals. Senator Okoa has aptly demonstrated over the past five years of his administration. This is leadership and governance by example. He has not only made himself available when need be, but he has equally helped Deltans to reach their goals by empowering them, encouraging them, asking questions and listening to them through participatory governance that has given them greater voice at decision-making table. This has ultimately built trust confidence, mutual understanding and transparency that stakeholders say can only get better as policies keep unfolding. We came into government with plans to ensuring that much is done. It is something that is very dear to our heart and so much has been achieved. We know that going forward in enshrining a stronger delta for our people, by the time we get it done in 2023, we would have been able to bring in many, many more. Deltas will be happy for it. Smart Delta. The one you're wearing, you made it. Yes, sir. I'm the one that did it. That's good. To underscore the passion of Senator Efanyo Koa and his team about the success of these ones, the administration went on to organize exhibitions that were transmitted live on national and international television stations, thus providing the boarding entrepreneurs with wider business spectrum and opportunities. I do a lot of this. When did you graduate from the program? 2018. You have customers for all this? Yes. So what do you do? They actually tell you what they want, then you go back and fabricate them. Yes. So you're fabricating different things, not just this? No, not already. So both those material. All right. me, the talking do governor. We thank you for the privilege and opportunity to us, the young women to learn this trade. We are grateful, sir. We want to say that we are praying and want to support your government. I salute the Delta State Government, led by His Excellency Dr. Ifeani Okoa, for the unflagging commitment and support to MSMEs across the state. I've already seen a wide range of businesses 
from product packaging to health services to agro-processing and related trades, Delta State is certainly booming with business initiatives and ideas. The desire of the administration to deepen the acquisition of skills among the youths triggered huge investments in technical education. The focus in the first four years of the administration was to revamp the existing six technical colleges that were at best in deplorable state. The technical education before now was abandoned and even to the dustbin. When he came on board, he picked up the technical education and started renovating all the technical colleges. I'm able to do all this kind of thing because I'm here. I encourage other girls to join me as a girl to also prove to the guys that it's not only a boy that can fix a motor vehicle, it's not only a boy that can discharge a motor vehicle and also replace it. The visible success stories of the six made Deltans to ask for more, and Governor Fanyokoa responded with the commencement of work on a new 19 more technical colleges. This brings the total to 25, that is, one technical college per local government area. We have already started the construction of nine, but at the moment we're just working hard to ensure that we're able to provide 15 by the end of 2021, hoping that we're able to do the rest before the end of the tenure. One notable setback to advancements and growth in developing economies is the dearth of infrastructure. This has led to calls from stakeholders for more funding of the sector in recent years. Senator Koa, from the inception of his administration, realized this development imperative as he has deployed huge state resources to roads construction with a view to link producers to markets. When they say it's a road master, I was thinking that uh, they are making a joke. For me, be a traveler, when I'll be passing so many roads, when Okowa do, uh, the man is really a road master. First in history, since the existence of Nigeria and Delta State particular, the first governor that has embarked on infrastructural development in the riverine area, including my own kingdom. One major decision taken to sustain the lifespan of the roads and also keep the communities clean and safe was the construction of both stormwater drainage and surface water channels. With the storm drainage system, COA is doing a lot and everybody's seeing it all over the world. Last year we can't be here in as lane for now, but this year now we thank God as lane before we still get a chance to park for it because we don't they see the positive work when Okoa they do for Delta State. Several modern and community markets have been built by the administration to boost trade in various communities, thereby shoring up their revenue base. I would like to say a big thank you to the governor of Delta State, you know, for bringing this uh, new modern market. With this uh, platform, a lot of people would like to go into business and they would like to do more because they know that our governor is doing a good thing. There is nothing as good as you doing your business and having a conducive environment for the execution of your business. So that he has made and more is still on the line coming, building markets and other structures to alleviate the suffering of our people. In the education sector, hundreds of classroom blocks and thousands of schools furniture have been provided to make teaching and learning conducive. Some years ago, if you look at this, my school of a six classroom building is in a chamber. But today, you can see it's taking a good shape. And who is doing it? It's our amiable governor. So I give kudos to him. With these instruments and facilities the government has been able to provide, the students will be interested in learning. The renovation has given us enough opportunity and standard education. Because without a comfortable class, we cannot listen attentively. The administration has equally recruited new teachers under the computer-based test, CBT program. Also, reward for teachers with timely promotion Payments of salaries when due and other incentives are the hallmarks of the Accor-led administration in the past five years. I must congratulate the Delta State government for taking this initiative. Education, whichever way you look at it, starts with teachers. They are refining the process 
of recruitment. As we know, CBT is uh, probably one of the fastest growing means of testing and assessment. Those who have been assessed know their fate immediately will help to improve our system in Delta State. The last five years has also brought about a total turnaround of the health sector. These milestones in the sector have helped the state to effectively cope with the many challenges thrown up by the novel coronavirus. Yes, I took everything. I call Governor Kowa the godsend health of Delta. He taught virtually every facet of the health sector. Five years down the line, it stands to the credit of the Alcoa led administration that Delta State is the first sub national in Nigeria to effectively implement contributory health scheme. This policy has put paid to out of pocket payment for Medicare. As at today, about 800,000 Deltans have enrolled into the scheme. Delta State, they are blessed. They are really enjoying free medical care, free maternal care, free sanitization. Everything here is free. Any health center, they don't pay money. You born free, you take medicine free, everything. Free, 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 free. Among several other infrastructure that have changed the landscape of Delta in the last five years, the new Central Secretariat stands tall. This, of course, is largely complemented with the upgraded Asaba International Airport. The best way to go uh, with our airport is to concession them into private hands to get them better managed. Delta State uh, took up the challenge. They dialogued with us in the ministry and they decided that they are going to concession the Asaba Airport. Here you are after three tedious years uh, being fully guided by the ICRC and they're able to put this to reality. We took steps to upgrade our airport, ensure that our runway conformed to international standards. You can see that the dividend is already showing. Now a good number of airlines are coming in to take advantage of this facility that Senator Dr. Fangokowa has been able to put in place in our state. It means that our decision to upgrade the airport is the right decision. Governor Okowa's philosophy of giving Deltons new infrastructure is not limited to the building of schools, roads, markets, hospitals and airports. But as you can see, right behind me is the new gigantic ultra-modern secretariat that we house all government ministries and parastatals under one roof, making government businesses to run more efficiently. I am very satisfied with the quality of work and the quality of the materials even the quality of the lifts. Uh, six of the lifts have already been installed in various parts. Uh, they are working perfectly uh, and I can attest to that it's best of quality. In sports, the achievements are too numerous, but suffice to mention that just three years into Okawa's administration in 2018, Delta hosted African Athletics Championship tagged as Saba 2018. This sports meet pulled down literally the whole of Africa to Asaba. This was made possible because Okawa completed the hitherto abandoned Stephen Keshi Stadium in record time. Stephen Keshi Stadium is one of the best in Nigeria and Governor Ifanyo Kowa has done well. We hosted the uh, CAA and uh, it creates a lot of opportunities where the African champions, even the world record holders, are here in uh, Asaba. So it also helps the tourism and not only that too, it creates wealth in the society. Nigeria's senior national football team, Super Eagles, have played in the stadium severally. This is largely on account that the stadium meets FIFA minimum standards. Also, Delta State School Sports Competition has been hosted here, not to mention the sports stadium built at the Ozora Polytechnic. For the first time in our history, we have three teams playing against the national team in Asaba. Nigeria played against CHLs. Don't just look at what is happening on the pitch, off the pitch, so we look beyond just on the pitch. 
look off the pitch, but to me, 100% Okoa has delivered on all his promises. I have to thank him for a job well done, and we need to see more like this, because that's what gives joy to the masses, because football is something that brings joy to every state. In the last five years, Delta State has left the radar of frequent negative media reportage and the oil-rich state has been relatively quiet and peaceful. This is on account of proactive measures put in place by Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyokoa. For instance, he sent a bill to the Delta State House of Assembly for the establishment of Advisory Council on Peace, which has since been working assiduously. The Deputy Governor-led Peace Advocacy Committee has made contributions to. All we did was to advocate and engage critical sections of our people, trying to make them appreciate the singular fact that we can achieve our aims and objectives out of vandalism. Through constructive engagement, we can have stakeholders who listen to us. That's talking about the government, the transnational oil companies. Because we are inseparable with our people, they had cause to listen to us, and by God's grace, we are able to restore peace. The efforts of the Otwaru-led Peace Committee has been largely complemented with the interventions of the Professor Sam Onyewari Advisory Council, the Chief Edwin Uza Conflict Resolution Committee, and the modest efforts of the traditional institutions in the state. His Excellency, Senator Dr. Kowa, the governor of the state, conceived from the very beginning that we needed peace and security. And he has a personality that is not overbearing on people. He performs quietly, humbly, but firm and focused. The administration has also partnered with security agencies as well as forged cordial relationship with other religions and tribes living and doing business in Delta State. To appreciate the work we are doing for the security of lives and property in Delta State, coupled with what other traditional rulers are doing and what the government is doing, is to demonstrate that fact by giving additional security vehicles to boost the morale of we the security agents in order to provide more service delivery to the people of Delta State. The Okoa-led administration has also done well in establishing a cordial relationship with the legislature in the last five years. This has led to good governance as unnecessary fight for supremacy is absent in the Delta polity. We have good working relationship with the executive and that is why you see that most of the executive bills that have been brought to the house, we don't hesitate to pass them. Like the health insurance scheme, the job creation that we are enjoying today, we also pass that bill. And all those bills are being assented to. And that's why you see that the state is working. Because the bills that will impact on deltas. The past five years has also witnessed even spread of projects across the three senatorial districts as well as political appointments to give voice to every ethnic nationality at decision-making table. Smart Delta. In the beginning of its fifth year, global health challenge in COVID-19 setting, this brought out the best in Okoa's management skills as he responded in admirable fashion to the threats of COVID-19. The state today boasts of six treatment centers evenly spread. The governor made sure that he had the medical team in place. We have enough isolation treatment centers where we actually have the confirmed cases being treated and most of them have been treated effectively and um, have actually been discharged. Let me commend the governor on his street directive that every Delta must wear masks. Not only saying that going ahead to provide masks to people of Delta in their various localities. Worthy of note 
is that its transparency in governance attracted donors to the cause of health in Delta State. The government is uh, definitely doing you know, some incredible work, which is why we chose Delta to, to come. I mean, there are a couple of states in the South-South, but Delta seemed to be right on top of you know, taking very concrete action, not just talking about it. The combined effects of the many well-thought-out programs of the administration in the past five years is responsible for the favorable investment climate that now pervades the atmosphere in Delta State. Delta State today is far better than what it was. In terms of infrastructure, there's been a lot of value that makes Delta State attractive for investors to come in today. We've played a very little part in adding value to a very small corner in the state. With five fruitful years in the kitty, with three more years left to press the tape on the finishing line of the Okawa led administration, all indices, according to stakeholders, is indicative of the fact that building a stronger delta is well on course. You better run, run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okawa is the do you better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okawa is the do. I see your job and wealth creation in Delta. Make the youth set them higher. Okawa. I see good growth everywhere in Delta. Make the people set them cooler. Come live in Delta. Tell me I say. Come invest in Delta. Come explore the potential 